Right, good evening um, everyone. Uh, welcome to the next episode of BB Harrier's AC Live. Um, we got such a great um, reception last week after our first episode which had um, Agatha Chinchala talking to us who was a, a recent um, joiner to the club. Um, we have someone who has been with the club uh, from the under 13s. <coughs> Um, he knows all about the highs, having been a national champion, having been an English schools uh, runner-up, um, and a senior southern men's champion at 400 meter hurdles. Um, but also he has endured um, injury, the 400 meter hurdles, which is his event. It's a very, very hard event. So introducing tonight Bailey Stickins. Um, I think of him as the comeback kid because he really has come back. And, you know, maybe for all of us, you know, we're, uh, we're enduring really quite a long layoff ourselves. And, and perhaps Bailey has some insights that can help everyone in the club um, perhaps come back from this prolonged period off. And what are the benefits and so on and so forth. So looking forward to talking to Bailey tonight. I can see he's here now in the feed. So hi, Bailey. How are you? Hi, Nick. Mate, um, let's kick off the questioning. So tell, tell everyone um, how you arrived at um, Blackheath and Bromley Harriers. Yeah, um, well, so I started at Dartford very young. Um, well, even younger than that, started when Dad was still running. Um, and yeah, started at Dartford with my mum and cousins. Um, then wanted to start racing and Dad knew Blackheath was busy, had a lot of athletes, a lot of young athletes. Um, so headed across there for for some more racing um, and yeah just kind of started training trained with Paul Patton I think to start with um, just doing some some sprints and jumps and yeah got kind of roped into multi <laughs> a various different events so I think I started with eight, 800 long jump and some sprint hurdling it was my first kind of track if you like. I have, I've had a look at your power of 10, actually, and I would encourage people to look at their power of 10, uh, look at Bailey's power of 10, because if you think you know Bailey, one look at that power of 10 really um, destroys all those expectations. Um, interestingly, I think the first thing that's recorded on there is the, the mini marathon. Yeah. Um, and you, you, you produced... I think the first time you did it at just a time, just outside 20 minutes, which I think is incredible. And then I think the next season you'd improve by two minutes. Yeah, that was, I think that was just training. There was, there was nothing more to that than just training. Maybe, maybe a bit of luck because everyone knows that the mini marathon is all about that start. But yeah, it's, <laughs> it just kind of happened, I suppose. So really, you, you know, your experiences um, are, you know, certainly the, at the start, are a lot that, that a lot of the young athletes, I think, can identify with, you know, going through that kind of cross-country season, very, in, you know, in the winter, doing cross-country, um, obviously the mini marathon, and then, you know, performing on the track, probably trying to find your event. Yeah. Um, but at some point, you kind of, I think, made a decision that the track was for you and you, you left cross-country behind, although I, I can see you were a very accomplished cross-country runner. I, I did enjoy cross country. The problem came for me was the distance. The distance, or well, as as a boy, and I suppose the girls to a certain extent as well, the distance just keeps going up and up. And it get it got to a point where I could no longer I could no longer compete with the guys that were that I was the season before simply because I couldn't get my head around the distance that I had to run and the distance that I had to train at. And yeah, it just kind of kind of beyond 5k for me is too far for me to race. It, it doesn't become enjoyable anymore, or it didn't at the time. And the distances were going from upwards of 6k, six and a half, maybe even seven on, a, on an occasion. So it just got too long for me. And I decided that it wasn't, it wasn't for me anymore. And, and how, how on earth did you find the 400 meter hurdles? Because I mean, certainly if you're, if you're my generation, you know, I grew up watching Ed Moses every week destroy everybody so that event was very much on my radar but but for you how did you come to find that event what what made you think uh, this would be a great idea <laughs> honestly it was a bit of dad pushing me in because i stalled a bit with the 800 i'd had a season where i hadn't run 
as quickly as I'd have liked. And also a little bit of team manager push as well. Go in, right. don't have anyone to do it. And would you like to give it a go? I kind of threw it, I, I jumped at it and gave it a go. Ran all right, first race out and suddenly went, actually, this is this is quite enjoyable, believe it or not. And then obviously, then you start inquiring into training and it's kind of gone from there, really. It's amazing that you say it was enjoyable. I think, you know, one of my memories of you is, is seeing you at Ashford after the Kent uh, the Kent Championships, having just done a 400-meter hurdles, and basically you're just lying on the floor being sick at the side of the track yeah. for the next 40 minutes. I do remember that one. That, that, that was the odd occasion. Well, to be fair, quite a regular occurrence from then on. Um, body not I mean, quite... it's a tremendous event, isn't it? It's a tremendous event for that kind of lactic build-up, isn't it? And that's, I mean, for the, for the youngsters that haven't done the event, I mean, had you experienced anything like that before doing the 400-metre hurdles? Is that something you experienced in the eight? Or? Um, it is, but in the eight, I switched off in, in, in the sense that, that that third 200 is where I switched off and then it was a sprint finish. So I never really got the full-on lactic that you get when you run a 400 meter hurdles properly. Um, I suppose those are those people that can run an 800 quick enough do experience that. I never got to that point. And I think the other part of that was, or well, me throwing up after every race seemed, uh, it, cause it appears to be dying down now was the fact that I had no winter. So I had no, no base since that first season back after my injury. Um, and my body just couldn't cope with, what I was telling it to do and making it do. And that was the quickest right. got rid of everything. So, yeah. And, and what, what, what would you say was your kind of, your, your breakout moment? I mean, obviously you've said that you tried the event and you, you enjoyed it and thought this, this is a good event for me. But when was the kind of breakout moment where you really realized that this was something special for you? Because you, you've, you've really gone to the heights with the event. Um, I think it was probably top year under 17 maybe it was that season that there's a couple of moments in there um missing out on any sort of any form of medal at the english schools was a disappointment but i knew it was in there i hit i hit a couple of hurdles badly and you're suddenly like oh my god if i hadn't have done that i could have done this and that's when you kind of know you're invested in it but then it was the success of nationals that year it's a 2014 that must have been and then the YDL final as well. That was where, even even in the YDL final, even though I did four events, the 400 hurdles was the first event, and I had a great race there. And it was just it, it was the feeling of actually crossing the line and going, yeah, that 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 felt quite good. That was good. And then that day just got better for me personally with the other the other events and the various medals that I won that day. But it was it was good fun, and I probably that that season definitely and either the national final or the YDL final. I mean, your experience there of, of, the, of the English schools finals, actually, that, that I mean, I'm not going to say choked, but, you know, it didn't go as well as you'd hoped. I, th I don't think that's an uncommon experience, right? And, it, I mean, just explain to people who, who maybe might be hoping to go to English schools finals yeah. or, you know, haven't been. I mean, just in terms of a size of an event, um, had you experienced anything like that before you got to it? Probably not. Probably the on the track, definitely not. I'd been to English schools cross country previously, and that was a pretty big event. Equally, the national cross country is a massive event. But in terms of a track event, main, mainly just because of the teams that turn up, you've got all the counties turning up with upwards of 20, 30 athletes all sat on the side alongside all the all the supporters that come it's the biggest event as a kid or as a young athlete and yeah it was it was pretty terrifying to get on the track because you're standing there in front of quite a big crowd and it's quite daunting but if you can if, yeah if you, if you can get your head around that it's a great experience and it's great if you can run well and if you can't quite run as well as you'd hoped you just got to kind of take it as I've run in front of this big crowd. Nerds probably got the better of you and kind of go from there and take that into the next race, which I did that season. Definitely. That's tremendous. And so, you know, obviously think things going well, progressing well. Yeah. Um, 
and as you say, the, the next season, you know, won the Nationals. Um, yeah. And then, you know, what happened? Was this really sort of, you know, your first experience with injury? Yeah, so I, I was lucky up until that point with injury. Um, didn't have any really, just a couple of, I, I think I had shin splints or a light form of that, maybe growing pains here and there, but nothing major that kept me out for too long. Um, and yeah, kind of got to, this was... 2015 so got to kind of april time about to start the track season races lined up and suddenly anything i did with any sort of force speed got a lot of pain and then obviously got it checked scanned and stress fracture which yeah isn't isn't a great experience to have yeah 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 absolutely so how what was the the advice for you then at that point with the stress fracture what, what how did they want you to come back at that point, it was season's pretty much over realistically. Um, a long time. It kind of get off it. Um, it was it was get off it and get into a boot, which is what I did. Um, it wasn't until... So I think I had six weeks in a boot and then got told I needed six weeks on crutches because it hadn't healed. So it's stress fracture's a tough one. Um, I'd always err on the side of caution for anyone that is experiencing it. Um, because it's very, very difficult to, um, it, it's difficult to heal um, and it's slow to heal as well, which I found later on when kind of I had a season on the track again after it and then I broke down again with the same injury, um, which becomes even more demoralising. Right. And how, you know, you say it's obviously demoralizing. That's, you know, that's, you know, it's one thing being injured, but it's also, you know, I think your expectations, it's wanting to get back and then finding that you can't. How did you cope with that? Um, so first time round, first time round, I cut, it was so long ago, I'm not too sure, to be honest. Um, just kind of kept myself busy um, as much as I could. So I, I started just helping people, just helping, just kind of sitting there watching TV, doing anything that would kind of keep my mind occupied for a bit. Um, second time round is a lot easier to remember. Um, I was at uni at the time and I just moved myself away from athletics completely. Um, Cause at that point I'd had a good season run, run quite well and just wanted to get away from it because I didn't want to hear that this person had run this and someone else had run that. It, it would have killed me mentally. So I stepped away, obviously looked at results and saw how well people were running. But I tried to keep myself to myself and just kind of focus on myself rather than worry about anything else. And yeah, just kind of, again, watched a lot of films, probably. I mean, I think, I think that's interesting, though, because that strategy, it seems to have served you very, very well because you then came back, didn't you? And, and yeah. you, you won the, um, the Southerns yeah. as a senior. Yeah, which is I think an amazing. I think it surprised you, didn't it? it? On the day it did. I, I honestly, I had a terrible race. Um, I don't quite know how I did it. Why? Like what happened? I finished. I crossed the line and didn't know I'd won it. It was that tight, and then got told. So I, I knew I'd run quick. I didn't know how quick, and I didn't know I'd won it. Um, it was only when I saw the results and Joe Fuggle came up to me and said, "You beat me," that I knew it. <laughs> It was it was quite scary, um, <laughs> um, and shocked me quite a lot. Yeah. And Joe is obviously someone that you've raced again against over the years quite a bit. He's actually a year younger than you, isn't he? But he's a he's a tremendous four hundred meter hurdler. And and Pat, I think, got him across as a or maybe you helped. I don't know as a, as a second claimer, and then he moved first claim, didn't he? No, Joe's Joe's been a great competitor. Um, he he's the one that beat me at that English schools when I came second. Um, he also beat me two years before that. He got the bronze and I was fourth. So I've raced him loads of times and it was nice to get one back at him. Um, but equally nice to see him running quick as well. So, How, how is it, um, you know, how important is it to have someone that you can identify with in a kind of constructive way as, as a rival you know, in, in your event, is that, do you think that's a positive thing for people to have or? Um, I think it's definitely positive. I think as long as you don't get too competitive with it and solely, solely focus on beating them or beating their time or 
as long as you can kind of look at the bigger picture as well. So if if you don't beat them or if you do have a bad race, you don't you step back and go, this is what happened. It's not oh my god, I lost to him or I lost to her. Ah, oh, why has that happened? Or oh, I need to do this, this, this. And if you can, if you can kind of use it as a guide. Um, but equally, you've got to focus on yourself and look at yourself rather than others, at the, especially in athletics. So you, you obviously went, went off to Loughborough University, yep. studying geography, I think, and, and you've decided to do a master's. Yeah, currently doing that. Well, yeah, currently studying that, not at Loughborough, but yeah, getting my way through that. Uh huh. And, and how is, um, for, you know, for people, obviously, you've, you've been at Blackheath doing your, your club performances and so on going to university how how did that change in terms of athletics what is athletics like at somewhere like Loughborough um athletics at Loughborough is very very good um the facilities there if if, if you don't know is second to none um massive indoor facility um decent track as well outside um money invested quite a lot um and for me I chose Loughborough Main, I looked at the academic side of Loughborough first and then chose Loughborough because of the sport. Um, but it was, it was very, yeah, Loughborough is, Loughborough is incredible for athletics. Yeah, I mean, I, had, I have visited because I, w- I went up to the, I think, the British trials and, and it is incredible. I mean, you know, lovely mezzanine with a high jump area and in, indoor hurdles. It, it, it's great. It is, it is fantastic. But, I mean, when you go to somewhere like that, it is a magnet for a lot of talent to come in. Yeah. And, and how is that, you know, who, who are you kind of rubbing shoulders with? Did, did it surprise you? Um, it did. It's, it has in the last couple of years. So, so first, first year of uni, I was injured. But having a look at it, um, there was a so – for, for the main athletics event, which is Bucks, there's four places for, for a place like Loughborough. Um, and we had four four hurdlers. So you're looking at it. We, we're all going to go as long as we're we're fit and healthy. Um, in recent years, so the last couple of years, we've had upwards of seven, eight, or nine athletes all vying for those four spots, which is quite challenging and can play on your mind if you let it. But equally, you just got to focus on yourself. Um, it's Bucks is very early in the year, which is the main university race, um, and it doesn't define a season, which is what I've learned off a couple off a couple of athletes that I train with up at Loughborough. It's it's not the it's not the be all and end all. It's you, you do you can have a season after it, um, but obviously it's a great race to, to be a part of and a great event to be a part of if you can. And how how did you or how do you stay connected with Blackheath and Bromley when you're when you move away from the area? That. It, it's difficult because you are so far away. So you don't train with it. You don't see anyone normally um, that you would every, pretty much every day if you went down the track. Um, but there are there are a few there are a few Blackheath up, up in Loughborough, so that helps. Um, equally, you've got team managers always nagging at you, trying to get you for races and this, that, and the other. Um, and then equally, um, for me. Um, training with like I sorry, originally trained with Dan Putnam um, and then we I suppose we helped get Joe Rogers across who was also in our group so you'd you kind of look in for, for a few af- athletes if if spaces are available if they if they're looking for a, a bigger competition like the National League or the British League um, yeah just trying to kind of remembering that you are one and also trying to trying to remember that you've got decent races for the club that you that you probably need to get involved in. And is it, I mean, it, it, Blackheath and Bromley is, is an attraction to people that, that you might meet and say, you know, that are competing up at Loughborough and say, you know, would you like to come and yeah, be I part think, of, the, of the team? I think, I think being involved in, in the National League as high up as we are, I think we definitely are. Um, you, you've got a few athletes, probably less so now, well, I, I don't know now, but you've got a few athletes definitely that, that come up to Loughborough or come to go to anywhere really that are for only from a small club that only maybe have a few races a year. Um, some of them don't want to leave that club because they've been there so long. But if you can get them across as a second claim, they they love that idea and they love having those those big races and the fast races that they can get involved in. 
that's that's terrific, Bailey. So, what's and and how far have you got to go with the masters now? Um, so I've got a couple of co couple of pieces of coursework left, um, which is then that side of it done, and then it's just a dissertation to do over the summer. Um, fingers crossed, we'll all go ahead if I'm allowed back up into Loughborough to go into the lab and do some lab work. But um, fingers crossed, we'll get that done. Excellent, excellent. Okay, and I mean, you know, because your family is has been very involved in the club. Yeah. Um, you know, it's not just getting down the track and training and so on. Um, what are the, you know, what are the aspects of the club that you've enjoyed in terms of the social side of things? Um, so I was, I was involved in the, um, what was it? We, uh, Claire put together a club that ran, I think it was Friday evenings. I was involved in that. Um, and yeah, it was, it was also some of the, some of the more fun races that, that we got involved in. Um, Chris, uh, Boxing Day, the um, paper chase, that was always a good fun race to, to do. Dressing up with various, I think we dressed up with the ostriches as uh, Snow <laughs> Snow White and the Seven Dwarves. And I think Paul was the Paul was Snow White that day, um, which was a very fun. I, I think any excuse for him to put on a dress, I hear. Yeah, I think so too. But no, just just yeah. I think bit. I think the yeah the, the Boxing Day uh, yeah the Boxing Day efforts are quite legendary um, from from your. Yeah. Uh, I believe there's been a nativity as well, I think, uh, as well, that you guys have, have got involved in. Yeah, I think there was that as well. Yeah. Th there's been a few big, big group events that we've got involved in. Well, when I was, when I was looking through to try and find a little bit about, about you that was going to surprise me, um, one of the things that I, I really loved uh, finding, um, which everyone can, can look at afterwards, or I, I might even be cruel and post it on, on Facebook, I don't know, um, was a wonderful picture of you and Lewis yeah. after the closing five um, because you won the closing five um, and Lewis came third. Um, and it was actually, what astonished me was your time um, because you're not, you're not very old um, and I believe you ran the course in 33 minutes. That was very good. Yeah, I mean that—that's certainly more than uh, six kilometers, Bailey, and and that certainly sounds like you were racing. Yeah, I, I, I suppose I had a I had a kind handicap, um, but even so, yeah, I just kind of I don't even know that 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 was a that was a weird race. I just kind of ran. I had Dad thirty seconds ahead of me, and I think I overtook him in the first field, and then didn't slow down, and just don't just kind of remember finishing and going oh. That was quite. That was quite comfortable. I don't really know. It was one of those. You, you kind of. You, I shot myself with just bouncing around, having fun, and ended up finishing and kind of going, "Oh, <laughs> that, that that was quite good." Yeah, I mean that, those ra those races, those kind of um, the yacht handicaps are quite unique. I think. I think they are. They are something to experience yeah. um, because they're such a different way of of running. And and as I say, you know wonderful to be not just racing against your dad but also your brother and i know your mum was in the race as well yeah i think so yeah we had we had a family affair that day <laughs> fantastic so how are you getting on with training in the lockdown i know people have been asking about this on the feed what's what's what are you up to to kind of maintain your fitness at the moment um honestly i've taken a step back um i've taken the view that i don't think there's going to be a very big season um, and anything that does come can be got ready quite quickly um, or I can get myself ready for it quite quickly I don't think I'll hurdle this year um, and I've had a few niggles coming coming into this um, but kind of just just get getting out and running I'm not I haven't really got a schedule um, I'm just kind of taking it quite chilled which is kind of unprofessional but I'm just enjoying it. Um, yeah. The kind of last week or this week, sorry, um, dad's had his group doing a challenge week and I've got involved in that, which was different events, different days. And um, so I've kind of, this is probably the hardest week I've trained. Um, but kind of before that, kind of just going out for, a, I was probably doing one decent session a week, going out for a couple of runs, doing a couple of circuits, just kind of keeping myself fit, not worrying about, I've got to do this and I've got to do that. Um, taking a bit from my coach up um, up at Loughborough, 
just kind of keeping it all included, but not putting any pressure on it. Yeah. And, I, and I guess also, I mean, I'm trying to think, your, your foot injury was probably two seasons ago, but actually a bit of a layoff. Yeah. Maybe no bad thing. Yeah, it's, it's, I think it's always a good thing. So I, the, the niggles that I've had have been foot related um, and just kind of, it, it's probably wise that I do have a rest at some point. Um, just kind of keeping the foot engaged with it, but equally just letting it recover and then going again. Um, and just also then being careful that when you do build up, you build up a bit slower just so that it can, because it does have a tendency to kind of go a bit painful, but then that normally dies down. Excellent. Well, baby, the other thing I wanted to just explore with you is I, I go into your power of 10 and it's the range of events that you've done. Cause I, I think you've mentioned sprint hurdles, the 800, the long jump. Um, I even found some pole vault heights for you as well. Yeah, that, that, that was, that was an event at, at one point. <laughs> yeah. I, I got involved in that. Again, so obviously, that... I know, you know, Lewis, your brother, he, he really got involved in that and, and, and achieved quite a bit of success with that. Um, was, you know, what, what took you into pole vault? Um, they needed someone. Someone needed me somewhere. Uh, <laughs> so I, I volunteered um, and kind of, I trained for a bit and then, um, well, four hurdles kind of took off a bit more. Um, so then kind of maintained the four hurdles and then because I could do it, I then didn't really train for it. I kind of did a session before an event and then, or before a YDL and then attacked, attacked the pole vault and kind of got a couple of heights in and got a couple of points and then stepped away from it. Um, yeah, I kind of wish I had given it a bit of, a bit more of a go, but again, it's, it's the timing. It's trying to get that training in as well as the other events and probably attempted to try and pole vault probably a bit too late with, Four hurdles being probably my favourite event at that time, so it just kind of got a bit neglected, which is why the heights don't seem to improve very much. <laughs> well, it's a very, very technical event, definitely a technical event. Excellent, uh, Bailey. So you obviously being very pragmatic about this season. Yeah. What are your goals, you know, for yourself now in athletics? What What would you like to achieve that you haven't achieved, or? Or, or what you know? Where's what's the journey for you now? Do you think? Um, it's it's continuing to stay fit, really. It's staying fit, running a bit quicker, um, and kind of seeing where that see what happens. It's I haven't really set an aim in terms of I need to hit this or I need to hit this. It's 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 more about ma maintaining my fitness because I think if I can have a couple of seasons, I will get a lot quicker. Um, the issues come when I get injured, and history dictates that or well, my history especially, is I've had one good season and then broken, then had a decent season and then broken again. And I haven't had that consistency, whereas I know a lot of other, other athletes have had a consistency of big winter, good track season, big winter, very good track season, and I just need that consistency. Um, I think then once I've had a couple of those, it then might be looking at, I can achieve this or this. But at the moment, it's just trying to get quicker trying to reduce that time to something closer to 50 seconds rather than 52 and seeing where that takes me, really. Well, best of luck with that and, and the rest of your course. Um, thanks a lot for, for sharing your experience with us tonight, Bailey. Um, and hopefully, you know, see you down the track, maybe not the end of this season, but certainly next season and, and back to your very, very best. Yeah, so thanks a lot for being with us for this episode. Cheers. Thanks for having me, Nick. All right. Enjoy the rest of your Sunday, mate. Cheers, and you.